Welcome to lesson 10. This is on editing and mixing audio. If I sound funny, it's because I just sneezed 42 times and I'm a little weirded. So, consider the difference it makes if you turn the sound off while watching a horror movie. Without an ominous soundtrack, scenes that were scary a moment ago can seem like comedy. Music works around many of our critical faculties and directly influences our feelings. Your body will react to sound whether you want it to or not. For example, it's normal for your heart rate to be influenced by the beat of the music you're listening to. Fast music tends to raise your heart rate, and slow music tends to lower your heart rate. Powerful stuff. <clears throat> so, in this lesson, we are going to uh, work on some different things because... It's rare to record perfect on-camera audio that's ready for output without any adjustments, but Premiere Pro enables you to do a lot of things to improve your audio mix. For instance, you can interpret recorded audio channels differently from the way they were recorded in camera. You can clean up background sound. You can adjust the volume of specific frequencies in your clips. You can adjust the volume level on clips in the project panel and on clip segments and sequences. You can add music and then mix levels between music clips and dialogue clips, produce a mono, stereo, or even a 5.1 surround sound mix. You can add audio spot effects such as explosions, door slams, or atmospheric environmental sounds. You can change the duration of a music clip to suit your sequence. In this lesson, you're going to begin by learning how to use the audio tools in Premiere Pro, and then you'll make adjustments to clips and a sequence. You'll also use the audio clip mixer to make changes to your volume on the fly while your sequence plays. Doesn't that sound fun? So let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> so we need to begin by switching to the audio workspace, but first let's open my mouse here. Let's open lesson 10. Lesson 10. Lesson 10. Where are you, lesson 10? There it is. Lesson 10. Let's open it. Click OK. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to save it. And how do we always save it? Do you remember? Say it with me. Underscore working. I didn't hear you say it. And then click save. <clears throat> so let's go to the workspaces menu. And click audio and then let's return to the workspace menu and click reset to saved layout like we always do <clears throat> we are now working in the audio workspace so now let's try this if it's not if it's not open already open the theft unexpected sequence in the sequences bin you see my theft unexpected is already open Open the Timeline Display Settings menu, which is right there, and choose Customize Audio Header. Customize Audio Header right there. The Audio Header button in Editor appears, and the Audio One track expands. And you see this editor right here. <coughs> expands to display the full track header. Drag the track meter icon onto the Audio One track header and click OK. Hmm. Let's see, what am I looking for? Track meter icon. I don't know what that looks like, do you? did here oh there it is we're gonna click that and we're gonna drag it where did I say drag it onto 
an audio one track header. Hmm. Notice that when you clicked OK, I gotta click OK. Oh, there you go. Notice when you clicked OK, the audio one track header returned to its previous size. Resize the audio one track header vertically to see the new meter. Sorry, I got interrupted. So what we're doing? Uh, we are. What are we doing? Resize the audio track one header vertically to see the new meter. So audio one is right here. So let's drag this down, and there you see it. There's your new track meter. So changes made to any track header. Update all track headers. Okay. There are two audio mixer panels in Premiere Pro. Let's look at the differences between the two. You have an audio clip mixer and an audio track mixer. So you up here you see audio clip and there's your audio track. Those are two different mixers. I'm assuming that we will configure some different things. There's a bunch of stuff that I could be reading to you, but I don't think you want me to read stuff to you. You probably just want me to do things. Uh, some of the things that I would read would be in your quiz, but I give you two attempts. If you want me to read to you, just raise your hand and say, will you come read to me, and I'll come read all this stuff to you. But other than that, I'm not. The audio sample rate is the number of times per second the recorded sound source is sampled. It's common for professional camera audio to take a sample 48,000 times per second. That's pretty quick. Let's look at an individual audio sample. In the project panel, open the music bin and double click the clip Graceful Tenure. So let's open the music Double click that. Woo! Look at there. So that opened it in the source monitor. Because this clip has no video, Premiere Pro automatically displays the waveforms for the two audio channels. At the bottom of the source monitor, the width of the time ruler represents the total duration of the clip. Open the source monitor settings menu. Hmm, where is that? settings menu that's a timer right there a little wrench choose time ruler numbers time ruler numbers the time ruler now shows time code indicators Try zooming in to the time ruler using the navigator just below the time ruler. You can drag the handles back and forth. The maximum zoom shows you an individual frame illustrated by the width of the playhead. You see that right here. <laughs> Open the source monitor settings menu again and choose show audio time units. Show audio time units. This time you'll see individual audio samples counted on the time ruler. You can zoom into an individual audio sample, in this case, one forty-eight thousandths of a second. You see all of these numbers down there. The timeline panel has the same option to view audio samples in the panel menu rather than the timeline settings menu. For now, we're going to use the source monitor settings menu to disable both the time ruler numbers and show audio time options. When you view a, a waveform in the source monitor, you'll see an extra navigator zoom control for each channel to the right of the waveform, talking about over in here. These controls work in a way that's similar to the navigator zoom control at the bottom of the panel. 
You can resize the vertical navigator to view the waveforms larger or smaller, which is particularly useful when navigating quiet audio. Let's look at some waveforms. In the theft unexpected bin, Theft unexpected bin. Double click the clip. H S John. H S John. And that opens it in the source monitor. Open the source monitor settings menu. And choose audio waveform. You can easily see where the dialogue begins and ends. You see these things. Notice the clips in and out points are shown as a highlighted region on the waveform. Notice also you can click the waveform to move the source monitor playhead. Switch back to viewing the composite video using the source monitor settings menu. What are we switching back to? Composite video that one composite you can turn off and on the display of waveforms for clip segments on the timeline the sequence theft unexpected should already be open in the timeline panel which it is down here if not just open it open the timeline display settings menu and make sure the show audio waveform option is enabled. Show audio waveform. Mine is enabled, so that's good. If necessary, resize the audio one track to make sure the waveform is fully visible. Let's make it a little bigger. Notice the two audio channels are displayed in each audio clip in this sequence. The clips have stereo audio. You see the two clips. The audio waveforms on these clips look very different from the waveforms in the source monitor. That's because by default, the timeline panel displays rectified audio waveforms, which make it easier to see lower volume audio, like the dialogue in this scene. Open the timeline panel menu, not the settings menu. And choose Rectified Audio Waveforms to deselect it. That one, we're checking that to deselect it. The regular waveform display works well for louder audio, but notice the quieter parts of the speech. It's harder to follow the level changes. Open the Timeline Panel menu and restore the Rectified Audio Waveforms option. Okay. I think this is a great time to end this recording because it's 13 minutes long and some of you would complain. <laughs>